We're now going to cover sections 3.4 and 3.5. Now 3.4 is measures of position and 3.5 is box plots. However, there's a little bit of bleed over between the two. So I kind of, you know, say that we're merging them together. Although there's definitely a separation. Now measures of position. I just want to mention what that is. A, a measure of your position is a measure of where the score is in relation to the whole data set. So are you above? Are you below? Did you score really well? Did you score really poorly? Etc. So that's a measure of position. Now this first topic is determining z-scores and I have an exploration here for here for us. Don't don't work ahead. Just wait um, and wait for the first bit. But we're going to explore through this and it'll hopefully give you a sense of how z-scores work and how they operate and what they tell us. So suppose you get an exam back and you find that you got a 70%. How do you feel about your score? Well, it can vary from student to student, but usually in a class, most people are not happy with that score. They have little tears, big frowny face, right? Now why? Because it's the lowest possible passing score. Now I will get some people that are like, I passed, woohoo, and I understand that, <laughs> but Nevertheless, it's the lowest possible passing score, so that's a little precarious. You might not pass the class if you score 70 all the time. Hmm. But suppose I then tell you, hey, the mean, right, the center in this class was 60. Now how do you feel? Well, now you're feeling a little bit better, right? So you still scored a 70, I grant you, but now you're thinking, hey, I did better than half the class. And that makes me feel better. As a matter of fact, that's one of the first things out of people's mouths when I pass exams back. What was the average? Right? Why do people want to know that? What was the average? What was the mean? Right? Well, what they want to know is they want to know, did they do better than half the class or worse than half of the class? They're, they're trying to measure their position. Right? That's why they're asking that. They want to know, am I in the top half or the bottom half? Although mean is not necessarily the middle score, but you get the general gist, right? All right, suppose I further inform you that, hey, a standard deviation on this exam was 10%. Now, what do you think? Hmm. Well, hey, if the mean was 60, I scored 70, I scored one um, standard deviation above the mean. That's what a z-score is. So your z is 70 take away 60 because you scored 70 minus 60 and you divide it by the standard deviation. So you scored 10 above the mean, a standard deviation is 10. So you scored one standard deviation above the mean. So you did better, right? You're doing pretty well. So I did pretty well on this test. in relation to the class. So knowing where the mean is kind of tells you, you know, you scored better than 50% of the class, right? So half, you can say roughly 50% of the class, right? Here, pretty well, I know, and you don't, you don't need to know where this comes from, but I know I did better than about um, 60 to 70% of the class. That won't be relevant. Don't worry about where that comes from. But but you get the general sense of that. So this is not bad. This is pretty good. This is pretty awesome, right? All right. So, um, and it could be even higher than that, but that's kind of a general ballpark. But then suppose the instructor is like, nope, nope, nope. Sorry. My fault. My fault. The standard deviation was not 10. It was 5. So the standard deviation was 5 instead of the standard deviation 10 like before. Well, now you're going to have a little party hat. You're going to have a big smile on your face. Woo. I'm going to give you a little party hat, right? Yay. Confetti's all around you. Woo. Right? You have a big grin on your face. Why? Well, you scored 70. The mean was 60, but the standard deviation was five. So you're 10 above the mean, which means you're two standard deviations above the mean. Woot. That means you did very well. 
not just pretty well, I did very well on this test in relation to the class. And that's the trick. These are in relation to the class and to others. And that's what a measure of position is. It's telling you how well you did in relation to the class. Two standard deviations is actually, and again, don't worry about the, where the percentage comes from, but in case you're interested, you scored better than somewhere between 75 to 97% of the class. Something like that. Amazing, isn't it? Right? So just knowing that standard deviation can help you feel differently about your test. It's still the same score of 70, right? So you know that you got the lowest possible passing score, but you know you did better, better, best, right? So you know, if, you, if this bottom scenario is the case, you know you scored better than almost everybody in the class. That feels really good, right? And that's what Z-score can measure for you. Z-score can help you figure out where you are in relation to the class. That's what it's measuring for you. All right, now the formula, there's two formulas, but they're basically the same thing. There's the population z-score formula, which is right here. So if these were population values, then that's mu, which is 60, and sigma, which is 5. If it was a sample, which quite frankly is more likely the scenario in this particular case, then it's just x bar and s but it still works the same way, right? So then the 60 is an X bar and the five is an S. Okay, I mean, it doesn't really change how the problem is. It just changes um, which one you use based on whether you're working with a sample or whether you're working with a population. So you use this, use if data are population, which doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. And this you use if data are a sample, which is gonna be more common, but there are cases and scenarios sometimes where we work with populations. All right. Oh, and I should probably box those numbers because those are the z-scores. So this right here, right, is the z-score. It's two on that one. It's technically one on this one, right? That's the actual number. The other work is just how to get it. All right, so a couple of things. Z-scores can tell you whether you score equal to, above, or below the mean. How? Well, they tell it to you by your sign. You scored above the mean, so both of these numbers are positive. If you score a positive Z-score, then you're above the mean. If you're a negative Z-score, you're below the mean. And if you're equal to the mean, zero, right? Your Z-score would be zero. And then the z-score tells you how far away your mean is from um, your particular x value. So you can tell, it's basically saying, hey, how does your score relate to the group? How does score, in our case it was a class, but so your x score relate to the whole group. That's what z-score is telling you, right? It's telling you how you relate to the whole group by telling you how far away, how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. The z-scores are unitless. There's no inches, no feet, no percents, nothing. It just is a number. So there's no unit to it. Z-scores have a mean of zero, of course, because if you're equal to the mean, then your z-score is zero, and a standard deviation of one, which we saw right here, because if you're one standard deviation away, right, then your z-score is one. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, there this will be a very important topic for chapter seven onward. We work with z-scores all the time, pretty much every page from chapter seven onward. Um, we generally round z-scores to two to three decimal places um, out of convenience. You can do more, but we generally do not. One more thing before we go is that I wanna show you how to find these values in the calculator because a lot of students mess up this calculation. So when you wanna find the z-score, you want to either use alpha F1, pick number one. You wanna make it look like a fraction like it does on the page and type 70 minus 60 and then down arrow and type five and press enter, two. Or you can type it with parentheses, 70 minus 60 
close parentheses divided by five because that's the right way to do it. What's not correct is this. Let me, let me type that. That's not right. So what's happening is it's taking 60 and dividing it by five and then subtracting it from 70 because of order of operations, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It's doing the division before it does the subtraction. So if it's difficult for you to remember that kind of thing, then you might want to put parentheses around that numerator because those go together. That big division bar in the middle is a grouping symbol. It's a parentheses. Um, we don't write it that way because, well, mathematicians just don't write it that way <laughs> because mathematicians know that a division bar is a grouping symbol. But if you want to type this correctly in the calculator, either put parentheses around it in the formula and type it that way when you type it in, so that second line, or make it look like the fraction and then it, you won't go wrong, which I did with the alpha F1 key and picking number one, like that.